Hi guys, I'm Jim from Only Slagging. I'm part of the fire squad here in Ireland. Uh, and today we're setting up the record for KJ Live for the watch party. Uh, so what we have on the, are gonna go on to the barbecue here today is spring lamb. So first up, what we need is some uh, rosemary. Doesn't get much fresher than taking it from your own garden. Uh, then we're going to need some mint. So we need plenty of mint for this. So just snip away here. Plenty of this in. So a simple root veg, onions, garlic, rosemary, mint. Of course, the beautiful lamb, some potatoes. Okay, so we've cleared out our firebox. I've put a, a small amount of charcoal here at the bottom, fairly small pieces. The ash door fully open there to maximize the amount of airflow air flow coming through. We're going to start the Kamado Joe probably for the first five minutes with the lid open and then after that we'll close it down. Okay, so we have started our fire here just using hot air. Um, I've left this portion of the uh, firebox uh, completely empty here. Good air flow coming through from below up through here. Um, that's all the fire we need to uh, have set up here uh, within the firebox and that will give us plenty of time to uh, start getting our ingredients ready um, as this sort of starts to catch and once we sort of get a bit, bit of this ash over then we can pull this forward just when we're getting ready to want to cook. Okay so the Kamado Joe spring lamb what we're going to do um, we're going to make up a very simple uh, wet rub we're going to slash uh, a few lines into the lamb just to try and help that marinade penetrate a little bit more. Uh, easiest rub in the world you can put together. We're going to throw everything into one uh, blender here, mix it all up and then apply the sort of slather all over the lamb here. So what I'm using today is rosemary. So we're going fairly heavy on the uh, on the herbs. Um, now you've seen we cut this from the garden earlier on there. We've given a quick wash in the kitchen and then uh, just brought it here. It smells really fragrant. Um, and we're just pulling all that off and getting that in, packing it in there. So you can do this a number of ways. Um, let me see, some of this garlic in here. So straight in, four big cloves of garlic. Straight in with the mint, just peeling the leaves off here. Um, we're not wanting to use any stalks. Um, and as I'm sure you're aware, we're still in lockdown here in Ireland, uh, like most of Europe, um, if not all of Europe. So a lot of the ingredients we're using here today um, are stuff that we have in the house or around the house. Uh, so in addition to this uh, recipe, you could add in anchovies, you could add in some of the oil of the anchovies, you could add in uh, the zest and juice of a couple of lemons. Um, you can really play with this, but what I'm doing today is the base uh, rub, and then you can add that as you see fit. Um, so we're just getting in plenty of mint, Mint and rosemary both work really well with the, with lamb. There's a, a wee lone bit of garlic. Garlic's always good, so we'll throw another one in. Uh, that, we want to go in probably with somewhere in the region of about one teaspoon of uh, salt. I'm using kosher salt here, and I'm going to go in with a good heavy pinch of kosher salt. In fact, we'll just go a little bit more. And about half a teaspoon of uh, black pepper. So we've got nice half pinch in there so we don't have any lemons and um, so what we're going to use today is a, a local rapeseed oil that's infused with lemon oil so we're just going to add that in good generous glug of the oil in there and we're going to give this a quick blitz look for the consistency of it and then i'll show you what that's going to be like once we get done there so Come a bit closer you can see so it's fairly wet we want it to be a little bit more uh runny than that so we're going to go in with a bit more oil and it's probably better to err the side of caution with the oil at the start and then just keep adding it in as you require so that's what i'm looking for there um 
nice and sort of wet, not too runny, not too thick, and that sort of consistency. So still some large piece, pieces in there, but it'll not matter. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a couple of slices into the, la into the lamb. So just going reasonable thickness, not too thick, just getting through that outer sort of fat cap of the lamb just to help some of this marinade penetrate and get right into the into the meat there so um we're going to keep some of this marinade and we'll use some of this marinade throughout um the cook to baste it on the lamb so all we're going to do is just add some of this on here now that'll do and that should be plenty there to, to keep for when we're putting it on and we're just slathering it all nice and thick over the top of the lamb we're going to transfer this to the fridge and then let it sit in the fridge for approximately um, anything up to sort of two, three hours. Okay, so the racks are in. Uh, all we're going to do now is close the lid, flip the daisy wheel on top, get that temperature rising a little bit more. We're going to aim for around 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, and this will start to climb. And once we get to about 180, I'm gonna close this down and start controlling the vents back down again to get us locked in at that 180 to 200 degrees. All I'm gonna do now is uh, spread some of these coals across the base. That's a tomato joke. So there's still plenty of charcoal in there, still enough for us to complete this cook. So we're just going in with our veggie pan here on the accessory rack beneath. This is where we're gonna cook our veg and then our lamb's gonna sit on the rack immediately above this. So we don't need to go too heavy with the goose fat because there is gonna be lots of fat from the lamb coming out on it. So we're just going in with a wee touch just there um, to coat the bottom of the pan and get the veggies going. There now you can just maybe hear well apart from that dove above us you can hear the uh, the veggies are starting to brown up there and uh, so they're sitting to turn to the way the lamb has been marinating now for um, about an hour and a half actually and um, so we're going to set that straight in over the top and then this is going to roast here uh, indirect the whole time above this cast iron pot and as I said it's going to drip down into the veggies here below okay so we're gonna have a look now and see how the lamp's coming on uh, not too bad what we're going to do is move the lamb off to one side here just so we can get in lift one of the crates out and turn some of the vegetables here and um, we'll do that on both sides and then we'll, we'll crack on that there. So just moving that over to one side Lift that one up a bit of multitasking here turn some of the veggies over Okay, our lamb's been on for uh, probably just over an hour now. Um, veggies and all have come along. So what we have done halfway through the cook is we've moved the lamb out to one side. We've turned some of the veggies round um, and we've rotated the lamb round uh, one more time. So I'm just checking on my thermo pen here now. So in around the centre, we're sitting around 56. So I had aimed for around sort of 55 to 60. I'm on a medium sort of uh, lamb. So at some parts, down the smaller parts here, we'll go up to 73. Uh, sort of in around 55 in the majority of it. So I still want to be nice and pink in the middle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lift the lamb off and let it leave it in the wee tray here and let it rest. So I'll just lift that off to one side. And um, what we're also going to do is... We will lift some of our veggies out so i want the potatoes just to stay on for a little bit longer so they're coming along there nicely but we'll lift some of the carrots and uh, root veg out and then what we'll do is we will leave ourselves a little bit more space 
in here just to get some of those um, potatoes spread out a little bit more. The onions, I've done them in the uh, in the skins. So all I did was cut them in half, left the roots and stuff on, but as they have cooked, um, all this lovely sweet onion from the inside is what we are after here. So they've actually been protected uh, during the cook by the skins uh, against the cast iron. So uh, we don't need to worry about those bits. I'm gonna lift that pan out now. I'm gonna move up to the top rack. So if you wanna have a quick look in there quickly. There's a small amount of charcoal left, but still enough to do the cook we need to do. Part of the joy about the ceramic uh, cooker that we have here is that it retains a lot of heat in the ceramic outside of it. So even though the charcoal drops down, we still have plenty of heat here to continue on with our cook. sitting resting, just lifting the lamb off now. I'm gonna just do a quick carve here onto the onto the board. So um, can you see that okay yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're wanting it to be reasonably pink on the inside. My carving skills aren't brilliant. So you can see there, still nice and pink on the inside. Um, need to practice on my carving skills, but we're getting there. Um, so, a little bit of rosemary on there to finish it off. So that's us there today. Spring lamb, on the Kamado Joe, um, roasted veg, cast iron pot beneath it. And then we have a little bit of lamb gravy we've made up here. And uh, I will admit we made the lamb gravy in the house, we didn't make it on the barbecue. But uh, she's just going on a little bit of lamb gravy. Put the